Sparta and Athens are two superpowers of the ancient Hellenic world that were in a constant state of rivalry and war. That is a theme that is commonly portrayed and believed today, as of course Sparta and Athens were always clashing heads. But historically speaking, is that necessarily correct? And were they enemies or friends or sort of indifferent to each other? It's obviously important to remember that when we're talking about any era of history, but as well as ancient Greece, that we're not talking about one static time period. We're talking very broadly, when we say classical Greece, that's a several hundred year period. When we're talking about archaic Greece, that's a several hundred year period. And of course, the relationships between these polis, between these city-states changed, and the city-states themselves changed as well. Now, there's no different for Athens and Sparta. Invariably, when we think of the ancient Greeks, we think of either Athens starting democracy and Sparta being a very warlike culture. However, there was definitely far more to both of these. But we also think about these two seemingly polar opposites, which again, not really, uh, constantly being neck and neck and constantly being at war. However, if we actually look this isn't necessarily the case, and in fact, these two states were allies more so than they were enemies. Let's address the elephant in the room here. Of course, Athens and Sparta had several headbuttings throughout history, the major one being the Peloponnesian War, starting around 431 BC, which was about a 30-year war, or two wars shortly separated by the Peace of Nicias, which wasn't very good, as it didn't last. Um, that was, of course, a massive conflict in history between these two superpowers. However, it wasn't just as simple as Athens versus Sparta. There was a lot more interpolis debate, and in fact, the Spartans, in quite Spartan fashion, were hesitant to go to war as well. Let's look back further in Spartan history. Now, earlier on, they settled and weren't really anything particularly special. However, uh, earlier on in their development, the Messenian War took place, where Sparta advanced and basically subjugated the neighbouring region of Messenia, offering them free passage out or to essentially become a Spartan underclass, which then became the Helots, their working servant class. This is what sort of first established Sparta as a military power, and at this time Spartan Athens didn't really have any dealings with each other. In fact, when we look at the Archaic Era, Sparta and Argos were the two cities that had the biggest rivalry. Many um, battles and wars took place between Sparta and Argos. Of course, the legendary Battle of 300 Champions took place as well. However, that was sort of a conclusion, well, not even necessarily a conclusion, but a, a part of a much larger conflict. You had Sparta moving into the fertile lands of Tegea, Argos defending Tegea. You have Spartan territory um, moving up into Cadia. However, they settled for a slightly smaller part. We see this sort of rivalry between Sparta and Argos in the Archaic Age far more than we see this rivalry between Sparta and Athens. Coming into the tail end of the Archaic Era, sort of bridging to the Classical, is of course when the Persian Wars take place. Athens and Eretria, for supporting the Ionian Revolt, were going to be punished by Darius, who of course sailed in, sacked Eritrea, and went to go and attack Athens, and settled at Marathon. And it was here where the Athenians put out a call for aid, and they too asked the Spartans, who accepted. Now there was a slight issue here, because the Spartans were during a religious festival, this was the Carnea, um, which prevented them from sending their army out at this time. The only other state, a very small one, which becomes far more famous um, about ten years on, is Plataea who sends a, about a thousand hoplites, which is quite a considerable force for such a small polis, to, to aid the Athenians in the defence at Marathon. Now, of course, the Athenians managed to win the battle and push the Persians out. However, in the coming days, the Spartans did actually arrive to support the Athenians. However, they missed the battle. Even still, the Spartans and Athenians, who were supposed rivals, the Spartans had sent their army to defend Athens, and was one of two states to do so. Moving on from this era, of course, uh, ten years later, Xerxes comes into Greece, and it is here where the Spartans are actually elected as the leaders of this coalition force against the Persian invasion. And again, in true Spartan fashion, we see this at Thermopylae and even Plataea, they were actually very hesitant to fully commit their force, and this is where we start to see some grating teeth between these two polis, with after Athens getting sacked, um, them basically threatening to sail off to Italy and settle an entirely new city, because the Spartans were deemed to have failed as their role as leaders of the alliance. So they'd failed to commit fully militarily to defending outside of the Peloponnese. Though Sparta often gets the reputation of being a very warlike culture, and they definitely had military um, 
elements, they weren't as warlike as we uh, commonly believe. They were actually incredibly conservative and incredibly hesitant to send their armies abroad. They very much didn't really like venturing outside of their own backyard, the Peloponnese, to defend uh, Greeks further north. But the Spartans do then commit, of course, to Plataea, sending about 40,000 soldiers in total, possibly even more, depending on the numbers of the light-armed troops. And of course, they beat back the Persians at Plataea with the help of the other Greeks, which, funny enough, was actually, just as a fun fact here, one of the largest land battles of all of human history until decently recently. So, so far, Sparta and Athens haven't really had any major conflicts. In fact, Sparta and Argos again had a um, sort of bigger, more famous rivalry as well. However, it is coming around the time of the Peloponnesian War, so around the 440s to the 430s BC, where the heckles start to go up. But it doesn't actually necessarily originate from Sparta. It is in fact their Peloponnesian League, which they read formed, essentially begged Sparta to declare war on Athens. And Athens was becoming very much imperialistic, spreading um, the power of their navy. They weren't allowing people, for instance, uh, onto certain islands, as if you controlled the waterways, you controlled what went through it. Uh, they were sort of enforcing their own imperialistic elements on lots of these other uh, Greek cities, and they were starting to be sick of it. So they actually went to Sparta, and Sparta did, in the end, declare war on Athens. And this is, of course, where the largest conflict in Athenian and Spartan history takes place, the Peloponnesian War, which was about a 30-year period, um, so quite a considerably long war, and of course is one of the most famous conflicts in Greek history. The, en the war ends very um, simply put with Athenian hegemony ceased, and essentially Sparta ends up filling the boots of the Athenians, and then everyone decided to turn their eyes on Sparta and go, hold on, we came to you to um, sort of, you know, shift the power away from Athens, but in doing so, you have now stepped up and taken their place. At this time, um, Agasellos had actually launched a campaign into the Persian Empire and got progressively far. Uh, however, um, there's a quote from him that says, only the Persian archers could draw me out. But this isn't necessarily a reference to actual archers. The uh, Persian coins were stamped with archers, and they supposedly actually bribed many of the other Greeks to declare war on Sparta, and this isn't just the only reason that they declared war. This is called the Corinthian War, where it was uh, Corinth, Thebes, Athens, and other polis that had basically had enough of Spartan hegemony over Greece and declared war. The Spartans lasted and beat back the Corinthian War, and then there was a peace treaty that was signed. However, now the rivalry was between Sparta and Thebes, as they were sort of butting heads, and of course the Spartans eventually, um, after uh, basically taking over Thebes and getting booted back out again, they clashed at the plains of Leuctra, where of course the Spartans had probably the largest crippling defeat in history. Now there's a very, very brief explanation of a very, very vast amount of time. However, as we can see, Sparta and Athens weren't really uh, rival enemies for most of their history. In fact, Sparta's sort of two largest rivals, apart from the Peloponnesian War, which of course is a massive conflict, is Argos in the Archaic Era and um, Thebes coming into the sort of 4th century, of course, with the Peloponnesian War still being a very prevalent uh, war, um, which changed the whole shape of the Hellenic world, where it was predominantly Sparta versus Athens, the two sort of most powerful and wealthy states in Greece at this time. But the idea that we get of Athens and Sparta having a constant sort of, you know, opposing cultural standards, one being pro-democracy, one being pro-sort of warfare, the communist democracy states, um, very much uh, exaggerated and politically driven, not very correct. But the idea that we get of Sparta and Athens being basically constantly at war and constantly at conflict is not exactly correct. And in fact, their relations are decently good. Again, the Spartans sent aid to Marathon. The Athenians elected the Spartans to be the head of the military coalition when it was the second Persian invasion of Greece. Their relationships were decently good. They didn't really step in each other's footsteps until after the Persian Wars and into that sort of Athenian imperial sort of era where the Peloponnesian War took place and of course the Corinthian War after that. I hope that you enjoyed this video here. I hope you sort of saw where I was coming at here that the modern sort of red versus blue that we often get isn't exactly true with 
history. Thank you very much for watching this video and special thanks to our members for supporting the channel. If you yourself would like to support the channel, of course, liking, subscribing, watching the videos is an absolutely awesome help and we appreciate that a lot. But there is also a channel membership that allows you to support the channel directly and also get access to a few little perks uh, as well. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll hopefully see you in the next one.